12-5 grand final in ESL Open Cup Korea. 189 maybe? Yeah, 189 today. Getting towards that 200 in this best of five. We will have a Zerg player in the bottom left of Ancient Cistern. He'll be our first introduction. Dragon Kazi Gaming's Dark. Taking on the Blue Darren. In the top right hand corner of the map, it is going to be the Shopify Rebellion. Done. End of one of our series. Let's see how this is going to go down. Let's see what Beyond and Dark have to bring us across the course of this best of five. Excited to see what we get going. What's going to happen and all the rest of it. That's our racks and our gas coming up early. And they're ready to roll. The overboard currently just making a little bit of a journey out up to the top side of the map as well, so. Off and away over there for a couple of moments. Can hatch gas and pool. We'll just be in. Brought up for a couple of moments. Okay, now ready to rumble. Seeing what we can do with this as our hatch uh, gas pool is obviously not going to be too aggressive or anything on a map like Ancient System. It's the sort of map where you do just kind of have. Generally, more standard plays as a Zerg. This is generally a good map for you the longer it goes. Beyond with a reactor first, and obviously no Reapers or anything as well, you could argue, is something that's a little bit uh, off from expectation here, right? A little bit of a surprise. Definitely not what a lot of uh, people would have been initially thinking of, I imagine, as that Overlord just moves around a little bit. And again, a couple queens, feelings all coming out for the early few moments here. Link speed coming up as well. Getting all of that underway. What well, the moment? We're gonna go right in towards the base. Sure, we'll go down on the left hand side. It's just going to get that started, get that underway. That's going to be our starting point as we have the factory lifting off. Going to move across over toward the reactor for a few moments as well. Link speed's about to finish. Maybe these few Lings can sneak around and do something, especially as Beyond begins to move forward with his initial few Marines. Link counterattack right now. Might grab a couple of SCVs in the natural. Uh, the first couple of Hellions have spawned. I guess it really depends if those Hellions are going to hang back or if they're going to try and move forward. Here come the Lings. Looks as though the Hellions have hung back. Gun is very ready for something like this, but he's not moving. He's not committing. He's busy with the Marines, apparently. So he loses a fresh mule, loses two SCVs, and the Lings get into the main. Gun. Just not paying enough attention back at home. Not not just not paying enough attention. He didn't react to the fact that these lings started attacking him. Which is kind of meant to be something you just do right straight away. Uh, so that's a little bit strange. And Bjorn supply blocked as well. Oh my goodness. Bjorn is... I don't know what's just happened for Bjorn. But he has just completely fallen apart in the last few seconds. He was just moving out with some marines. It was a very normal move for Bjorn. There's something he has done repeatedly. He's done so many times. And now he just, <laughs> and now here we are, now this. What a strange, strange uh, way for things to go. That is very funky as our Banshee pops out. Look on the way, Hellion on the way, Armory coming up. He's going to see a few Hellions going out the right-hand side, trying to see what's going on. And those drones and a small crawler will continue to produce, and it's going to be seeing our Hellions will come down the right-hand side. We've got a few Zerglings over there. These aliens don't find them. These links could be another counterattack as Bjorn. I wonder if the armory is a little bit of a, like, a, oh, crap, I'm not in a great spot. Let's do something about it and just try and win the game with this. How about Banshee push? To be fair, Balin is only just starting now. It's a little bit late. There is potential on this attack. There's Marines as well to buffer it up. 
And Steering Bay is not there in time. That is going to be a run by. Straight in we go. One Banshee's pulled back here, so maybe that can clean this up eventually, but it's going to take a few seconds still. A couple Hellions will come across as well. I kind of feel like Gun. Oh, this is such a time fire for, for uh, Doc. I mean, Doc did not really have anything. That was his. He only has 18 Lings and then six Queens on the map beyond this. I really feel like Hellbats across the map would have done so much damage here, but. Yeah, Bjorn now waits, and now he's going to go Baneling Nest finishing so we can morph the Banelings in, and that should give us enough time to deal with this. If that Engineering Bay was just down, a couple of reinforcements could have dealt with this. Instead, here we are as Dark will hit a Supply Block uh, as he loses an Overlord. Banshees will cloak up, but there's an Overseer, so the Banshees have to be careful. It's just so scary, because now you're on such a timer because these Banelings are going to finish up, and Banelings are going to be very scary for these Hellbats to actually deal with. As you see them starting to move forward, the Banelings actually do connect. There wasn't too many. And even still, you can see that Dark is a little bit underprepared, but having to fall back really has just bought a little bit of extra time necessary to make the difference here. And that is starting to seem quite notable. It's going to be seeing that Banshee coming back around the edges. Only three drones going down. Do you not feel like this was enough at all for Bjorn to get back on track or to really make up for... Now this all uh, was going before now, so it doesn't exactly feel too pretty. And there's our Ling runs in over here, a couple Lings running over here, a couple of SCVs will begin to go down. SCVs, three of them are going down, a couple of Lings are going to get active, a couple of Depots are going to be in trouble as well, we're going to lose one man, Bian is not having a good game. Like, it feels like there's just so many little things with Bjorn. Don't get me wrong, like, you look at the supplies and stuff and the numbers, and it actually doesn't feel too terrible. I guess the SCV count now is looking bad, but you still ahead on army supply. This feels like it should have been a very, very good game for Bjorn if he just played a little bit more properly. But he's just been messy. He's been making little mistakes that are absolutely adding up throughout the course of this, and I think that especially is uh, having some impact as we'll drop an overlord over on this side. A few lings and the Balin will join up on the top as well, ready to maybe jump into Major Upper Lord and try and cause more chaos. I don't know, man. Like, if Bjorn still just had, like, one mega push right now, he might still do okay. Dark is switching into freaking roaches. Like, missile upgrades, roaches being brought out for the moment. That's getting a little bit wild as well. There's our combat shield still coming through, and 12 roaches still in production. Army of Bjorn will begin to make a move forward as our Marines will unload into the main base. It's going to force these uh, Marines to lift off. They're going to pull away. The Ling's going to run in. A couple of SCVs will immediately be in some trouble. The Marines are there pushing those Zerglings back. It's going to be able to deal with that pretty nicely, and at least this part is decent. Again, I mean, you look at it and I feel as though Bjorn would have been okay if this was you know, a game about kind of the armies, and if he'd been able to fight and take a straight-up fight, but it's not been that kind of game. Doc's made sure that it hasn't been about that, so... It's definitely having an impact as our Marines stem forward. The Roach Ravager are going to come through. And it might as well just load up and back away through the center, back towards the top side of the map as well. Thanks for Siege, Marines and Halberts. Just going to push on forward. Here. Another siege tank going to be setting up. Roach Ravager still coming through. Queens is going to be in the front here. Marines are going to try and trade out as best they can. It's going to be seeing the Queens pushing the medivac back away over to that right hand side. So just chasing that all the ways away. Another little drop of Lord is seen already. So again, moves into position. Defending this as he sits on two bases, though, again, that's not exactly healthy. He needs, uh, well. Bjorn's really still just setting up for one big push. Like, that's all this can really be. This is not a game that's going to go on a long time. This is not a game which benefits Bjorn over time in the slightest. These are things where you're going to have to do something about it if uh, you want to be taken seriously here. Means tanks and hellbats all coming down the map. He's going to start stemming in. Our Roaches and Ravages coming around. Some Roach Ravage on the right side as well. Marines 
will fire as a couple of roaches already will be picked away at. So you see Ling's still coming through, a couple of these tanks again picked away at as well. So a lot of those ravages continue to drop, just going to be seeing not enough though from Bion I don't think, because again it has not really been the prettiest of games from him all said and done. Just a lot of little mistakes early, a few things he can definitely try and fix up I'd imagine going into game two. Not super worried, Ancient Sistan is Dark's map pick as well, but obviously it definitely wasn't the uh, prettiest of scenarios. Viper's is on the way from Dark as Bjorn is still on two bases by the way, so as Dark hits Viper Tech, Bjorn is still yet to take a, a third, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> where we are at. Marines and tanks coming over that right side. The Ling's running up the right as well. Away they go. Again, just going to hit a counterattack onto the natural expansion just around the back of the army. No raise on the depot. That's really a summary of this game. Just little mistakes would be on there have made his life a whole lot more difficult. I really think if those first links never got in and he attacked with the Hellbat Banshee timing that he originally had, I think this game could have been, you know, just Bjorn's right then and there. <clears throat> the delay and the wait and the preparation time that Dark ended up having was really quite ridiculous in the end. Let's see Marines backing it up, a few medivacs just going to load up and back away. As Dark is gonna find too much else on the tail end of all this. We've so seen a little bit of a chase down, a couple of Banelins getting hunted. There's two melee plus three carapaces all being brought up as well. Again, just marines, marauders, and mines being brought up at the moment for Bjorn. See so he's got a third CC at 12 and a half minutes landing. Again, just not good. <laughs> not good enough at all, but uh, like I say, he's gonna Try and make these gonna try and make something of this at the very least. I don't think it's gonna be enough, but I guess we'll just sit here and say prove us wrong. As if I will knock down some rocks, but <clears throat> one tank dies, another got abducted, Medivac to Parasite bombed. Bjorn is fighting through a choke point into Zerg group spread with a Zerg army waiting on the other side. None of these things add up to being in Bjorn's favor. It should just be a convincing shutdown and close out here from Dark. I just don't want to have much excitement to bring to it because Dark has been kind of in this winning position for what feels like a hot second at this stage. And we're still coming up and Marine's going to stim forward. More creep teamers will continue to drop down dead. I think Bane Roach. I'll try to come through as well. Medivac load up. But one of mine's going off. Diving forward onto these ravages. I mean, I honestly, to me, it doesn't make sense that Bion's still in this game, and yet here we are, and he is actually making some progress. As he punches through, like, what the hell are we witnessing if you actually want to ask it? Like, why is it so close? Like, why does it feel like Dark is struggling to survive on four bases against a Terran that's only just taken a third moments ago? Is it true, guys? Is it possible that Terran is actually OP? Because this game has kind of got me believing a little bit. It's a little bit redonkulous what's going on right now. Of vials and of mines against it. I mean, Bjorn's still behind. Dark has a large army moving across the map to attack Bjorn, and his third base is going to be barren of defense, so this is likely all going to drop. I think Dark still has this game under control, just as it has been more competitive than I initially imagined, honestly. Much more competitive. Something's going down. A bunch of SCVs have fallen. The battle continue to fight, a few more lings dropping off. 
Lucky Bentley is putting themselves to work there as well. And again, Fess is coming out, Vainland's coming out. Where's Zirkling's coming out too? I'm just getting really a bit of everything to close this game out with is... Marines do come over and just poke the Overlord around this checking. I mean, we still got a little push on the top side. Out of gun as well as... The Vipers will drop a couple Parasitic Bombs in. In fact, we'll begin to take a bunch of damage. Our Banes will just go charging forward. Really, not much else to add, just... Somehow, Bion is still not quite dead. This game will still go on a few more seconds. We really should be done here, like... This really should kind of be over. As our lanes continue through, there is GG called. Dark takes game number one of this best of five. That's the victory there in the... Alright, in the bottom right-hand side, a Red Zerg player from Dragon Kaizy Gaming. This is going to be Dark. In the top left, uh, Blue Terran, with a Shopify Rebellion, Beyond. Gun is down a map. Like I said, I was kind of just impressed by his ability to survive for so long after the game started out. Kind of nastily, like I say, some mistakes were made. I guess we'll see what happens. T-Rex straight up proxied, scouted immediately by this Overlord, and, uh, yeah, I don't think, uh, everyone's going to be too happy about that. Drone's going to come and pull in for a couple of moments, trying to see a little bit what's going on. So you can see now SUVs running back around the sides, and I'm just going to get moving with that for... A little bit. One of the uh, barracks got stopped from finishing, and now it was moments away from being done as well, which is a bit of a shame because maybe you can still make it work from there. It's gonna be Reapers. I'm gonna make one, maybe a second now. I actually feel like maybe the Reapers are the most recoverable from this scenario because there's still a potential for damage, even if the timing is a little bit off. Then you can still utilize these Reapers to some extent uh, following up as well, so... Drone coming around, just gonna be seeing the uh, Reaper continue to ping away for a moment. The Reaper comes back down into the center. Couple Queens coming out, Drone on the way, Overlord producing. Everything kind of getting set here for the few moments as our Reaper's still poking around. Up, up and I'll we'll hop back down again as the things will be there. Say, no, uh, ain't coming at us. Factory is about to finish up from Bjorn back at home, so again, just a bit of a weird start. Again, the early game definitely not pretty when it comes to um, how Bjorn is getting this going, so. Not ideal in the early stages. Like I say, it's been a little bit of a messy start from Bjorn. We'll see if he fixes that up as the games continue through. Stop all coming up. Reactor and the refinery all coming in as well. It's just bringing a lot of this out for the moment. Stop so coming in, Tech Lab, Link Speed also being produced for a few moments, just getting that underway and seeing how things will go. And a couple of Hellions, and Viking. Even just a bunker defensively from Pioners again, it's not being the prettiest of starts, you've got to be a little bit careful throughout these early stages then. Make sure you don't let things get too out of control as our Reapers 
Have to back it up away from those couple of queens. Just gonna spread that creep forward here for a few different creep tumors coming in. Lair and the overlord coming out. We actually do get one of the creep tumors, but it's again multiple on the way down, so only gonna be the single one denied. As the overlord will get knocked, and Dark just moves his way into lair tech without really showing us too much else. It's gonna say it's still possible to maybe drop a roach roan and go roach speed and upgrades and just kind of play the roaches. Uh, it was either going to be that or Baneliness in the next few moments. He did choose the Roach Roran. Just when it's dark, I always feel like Roaches are a little bit more kind of on the realm of possibility than you know, they would be otherwise, so... And he's come through, a couple of grenades go down. Again, just getting another Creep Tumor, but it's pretty limited. There's still active tumors around. There's still going to be Creep spreading. So, a little bit of a slowdown is nice, but we're not getting too much of a slowdown, I think it's fair to say. Banshee gonna be finishing up as our Viking starts to go in after a drone here. Just gonna see the couple of Vikings coming through, uh, Queen's coming through, shooting at the Viking. Viking's dead. Turn back around there, not sure what happened. Bjorn is on the top side as well, trading with just the Reapers and Hellions. Does find the one active tumor on this side, will force a new one to be built then, so... Just forcing that queen energy this time to be a little bit lower, at least. Gonna have one Hellion going down. Just gonna be seeing the Reaper. Hellion force pulling back. Otherwise, just gonna see our barracks engineering base. Gonna continue to produce and just gonna be having our missile upgrades. So one one and that roach speed will continue to build. Just get those 1 1 upgrades ticking. That Simpax coming through. Banshee will cloak up. Make a little bit of a play forwards here and maybe try and nip into this mineral line. There's no detection available. Well, there's an overseer halfway done. Gun turns and will find himself. A couple drones that are left behind on the extractors. That should be the majority of this damage and be able to kill this one as it pops back out. That's three. And then the overseer available on the natural. So the Banshee will get turned around but still finds a few drones. Also got a couple kills over on the third base as well. Roach is finding the Hellion Reaper, however, Bjorn has to pull that back. It looks as though Dark has now, for the most part, stabilized. Six drones is the final damage. It's not the end of the world. Obviously, the Banshees are still alive too, so there is a chance for them to do more later, as I cursed it, and this Banshee will now go down. Roaches across the map want to break this bunk if they're going to see success. Don't think that's going to happen, though, and so no access to the base. I mean, some unhappy Roaches, they just have to turn back away, and if they really want to do something, maybe some Ravagers would have helped them out. Not far from 1-1 missiles. You rebuild a few drones here as dark. There's a lone stray Hellion. It's still alive from earlier. Gonna show up on the right side third. Dark is gonna instantly drop down the infestors. He had a bit of gas stacked up. I was thinking maybe he's gonna just morph Ravages. Having shown us already a little bit of an attack across the map. Maybe he would try and just bust the bunker. I didn't hate the idea of attacking. If there's no bunker there, it might be kind of tough for Bjorn. Especially because obviously he's built Banshees, which are then already given up to Dark because he's, you know, been losing them on this side of the map and everything, so... Knowing that, I think it was actually kind of a smart choice from Dark to attack in the way that he did. Single circling is gonna go chipping through there still. How much you're coming up? Couple more Marines in the siege tank still building. As you have 11. Creep team is spreading just to tell you that Doc is really on top of his creep spread. He is building a whole chunk of that right now. And a lot of that out as we... Queens and Roaches pulling through. Marines into the main base. The drop is actually going to get on top of the drones. Drones have, don't have a good place to run because of the way that Bjorn dropped. He kind of stopped the drones from just running toward the natural, toward aid. That would have meant they ran through the Marines and probably lost more of their numbers. They ran around the back and the sides and... That cool little drop in. Still getting two, two upgrades building on the side of Bjorn. Marines are still pushing out. Medivac is going to finish. The Ravages will begin to move in as well. And now the Bailing Nest coming down too. Drones already dying over toward the main base. This Banshee 
trying to put in a little bit more work. Bailing Nest is about to finish up. Hive is going to be done shortly. Banshee just pulls. Now it is going to get fungal growth. That should be the end of the Banshee. Nope. It's actually not enough damage. Well, the Banshee survives a few more moments as now it goes down. Actually, Queens from the high ground get the snipe. Gun starts to push. Dark obviously has the fungals, and that's going to be fungal a bile combo, but Biles unfortunately will not quite find their targets, otherwise that would have been beautiful. Moving our way into the Vipers as well. Bjorn just immediately saying, right, I'm going to Ghost. I think he's noticing there's just not really much of a chance for him out and about on the map, so dive towards the Ghosts instead, go for a bit of a different approach. Let's see how this turns out. And Ravages and the Infestors moving back around that right side. The creep spread is just all over the map, by the way. Can't, uh... Can't really blame Bjorn for just deciding to start playing a longer, kind of more laid-back game, right? I think we're getting, definitely getting to that kind of a point as a fungal. Grabs a few Marines. Microbial Shroud, of all things. I feel like that was maybe not quite the cast he was looking for there. Ghost coming up, still seeing the plus two melee upgrades, still continuing in as well. Adrenal glands, plus three carapace, the kindness plane, all being added on. So now I'm just going to start knocking their way through a set of rocks over here, so opening up this portion of the map. And Dark, I mean, maxed out. He's been teching up like a madman as well, so he's not just Max on Roach Ravage, he's got some tech behind it too. Can Bjorn cause enough trouble? Keep Dark kind of pinned back and indeed keep Dark in some weirder positions at all. His bomb gets rid of the medevac, of course, is nice to just shut down these drops, take away the few things that Bjorn can control in the game, which usually is the dropping and the momentum that you build up there, for example. That's the pop out, so just gonna see how Ling Bane Roach Ravager coming around, medevac around the top with a few marines. A little bit more creep spread going down, marines will unload in the center, medevac loads up once again, gonna go diving forward, looking to jump on this base as we're gonna crash straight on through, tanks getting surrounded, SCVs gonna get jumped on. This was not a great first kind of wave of defense from Bjorn, usually when you're setting up defensively like this as the Terran, you kind of hope to hold on for a little bit and to trade well a few times over initially. Not quite the case here. As you get Burrow coming up, 3-3 three, three upgrades coming in, Neural Parasite is coming out as well. We are Dark up on the top side, just uh, lingering as he rebuilds. He gets ready to just go crashing into this Terran defense. Ideally, if Dark can shut down some economy every time he attacks, that's brilliant. One of the main things is he's going to try and keep you on four bases as long as possible, try and stop him from getting to a fifth. He's even already setting up the Neural Parasite. He's really got the tech in play to give him a good long shot at this game as they're running forward here. Blowing Cloud's coming down, the Ling Bane coming through. Uh, a lot of these tanks are dying, actually, as the Ling's got on top of them. And there's a lot of Banes just alive because of the Blinding Clouds. There wasn't really the tank shots to clean up the bailings, so the bailings just continued to flood on forward, and they did find a lot of the bio units in the end, so a nice little touch on that regard. Again, lives and tanks. We'll come through, just gonna see a few more banes building up.
Flames Roach is being still pushing through the Medivacs and the Libs pulling back a little bit. We are going to dive forward. SCVs will be in a chunk of trouble there immediately. And the Liberator gets set. Now we're going to dive to the bottom left hand side as a few more SCVs will begin to drop. So many SCVs going down. We're going to try and extend bottom left as Bjorn. He's going to try and find the way through there, but I just can't really believe that's going to be uh, what you need. I don't think that base is going to cut it, honestly. As do you see the couple of Ultras still about to pop? Plus two missiles coming up. Bungle growth is going to be. Oh, how many lands? I think just finished as well. Dark dives in once again. His spell casting's been pretty good. He's going to lose a couple of vipers now to missile turrets. Yeah, and the spellcasting's been good to allow the kind of ground units to get in on the follow-up, and once again, Bjorn will just sit here and take the beating. There's not really much else he can do. And Stark will just set up to go again. And with the entire map covered in creep, the pretty much all of his base is taken. It just makes sense for him to play like this. There's no reason to steer away from this sort of, you know, setup of trading. There's just there's just none at all. And so he shall not. There's a couple snipes are going to line up. A tank goes down. A couple ultras lead the charge forward as the EMP lands on a couple of infestors. Families are grabbing a couple of the ghosts and you just continue to run in here as the ultras will go to work cleaning out the rest of this. Got 120 supply. Has a bit of money to rebuild with still. That ultra could have maybe had a siege tank, but quite meant to be. Gun's got a little bit of money, so again, rebuilding is possible. It's just taking time. He's adding on tanks and halibats and nothing else at the moment. Wondering where we're going to take this overall. Halibats. Going to trade very well against these first couple of lings that run into them. I mean, that's kind of the value you need a little bit of. Oh, that's all going for a few more lings. A lot of SCVs continue to die. A lot of damage being done once again. I mean, this is what you want from Dark, like I said before. If you can deny the economy a little bit every time you fight, it really does just throw the Terran player into a position they can't really do anything against, so. No Bane's coming around. Hydra's as well. Those Bane's have to crash into the Hellbat. The tank goes down as well. A couple of our ghosts being knocked away at. They will get knocked down. Last few hydras are going to drop as well. I'm just going to be seeing our plus three missiles, our hydra speed coming up. In the end, GG is going to be called because Bjorn can't hold on any longer. I feel like it's fair to say we kind of saw this one coming from a while away. Three. In the top left hand corner, up two to zero. Our red Zerg player. Still from Dragon Casey Gaming. It is dark. But right, our blue Terran. Really just needs to get off to a better start. Nothing has really gone well for him in the early stages yet. It is Bjorn. I really was a game that we just kind of sat there and watched a Terran die on for a while. And a few drones coming out, hatching the gas coming up. And you see how overload of dark. Going down toward the bottom side. Obviously no proxy or anything this time from Bjorn. And also no forward reapers or anything. I thought that might be a... Uh, A little bit of a factor as well, but turns out not to be the case. Spawn rule coming in. CC coming up. Factory getting built. It's going to be getting everything underway here as we get things rolling for a couple of moments. And again, just a peaceful setup. 
just hoping Leon finds a way. Let's just have that better early game is really just what it comes down to. That's uh, it's really just what we need right now. Link speed, links, couple of queens. All the huge currently being brought through. Factory. Just a little lift off and drop back down. A little bit of action. Link speed still just halfway through for the moment. Starboard coming up about halfway along as well. Kind of game do we think Dog's gonna play? He does take that forward base, by the way, instead of the, uh, the kind of the one to the right side of the gold minerals, which we talked about a bit earlier when it was Dark versus Cure during the semi-finals. More marines coming now. The medevac and a heli on the way through. A lot more lings producing on the side of Dark as well. Just bringing a whole bunch of that up and online. It's only a few moments. Ling's going to get some information, just poking at the front, and we'll actually get a cancel on the depot as well, so that'll be... Was that even out in position, though? Looks like that was a little bit different from where it's placed right now. As the medevac units moves through, the Ling's going to force these... Uh, well, the medevac to turn back around. Dog going to get a little catch on the Hellions. He does break free, Bjorn, and his uh, Hellions will survive. Going to get that depot on the low ground again, it would seem. Oh my god, it finished, so it's actually not even going to be a cancel as Bjorn. Going to lose out on that one. Liberator up, a couple more queens going through the lings as well. Just the uh, medevac coming by is actually going to maybe be able to just grab an overall to start out with. So there's a lot of lings made from Dark, you know, while it looks good, you know, getting this damage done, etc, etc. You come in here, you now you lose an overlord, and in general you're still on a pretty reasonable counterattack as the Terran. Overlords, Queens, and Lings all still producing through the Hellions and the Liberator still on the way out. Just going to be seeing this Liberator popping out that starport, going to begin to move into the middle of the map. An armory on the way down from Bjorn as well. As these Lings go hide up behind the natural expansion and a few Marines just unloading from the Medivac. The Overlord is about getting pushed and shoved away for the moment as again we keep that vision back. We keep those units pinned a little bit. Aliens get there, gonna be able to grab a Zergling to start us out. Just gonna be seeing the armory still coming through, the few overlords still pulling back along over to the left hand side. Nine drones producing a couple of barracks on the way out. The library gonna go ping away at the overlord as well. Still seeing our Hellions coming to the front here. Off to the Hellbass, it's going to be Bjorn really looking to find something. This is kind of what happened on Ancient Sister, and then he never really got to really commit, right? It feels as though there was a moment where Dog was very underprepared for Hellbats, and then he's able to uh, buy himself time. This time, no time buying. One Queen goes down. Good movement so far is limiting what these Hellbats can do. And now at three Queens killed, going to get a couple more before this is done, it would seem, as that's number four. Liberate moved into the main base after stopping the third base from mining the drones, I believe. have not even gone back to mining on the third just yet, so... Bjorn is going to keep Dark pinned a little bit. And as the Hellbats will continue to deal with the Zerglings quite nicely. And another Queen will go down. And this is very painful. Every Queen is just going to be mean less creep spread, less injects. Less potentially even just added defense a bit later down as well. Coming around the uh, top side, you can see still have attack upgrades going through. CC wants to land onto the third base. Four reactors coming up. Just seeing our 
Master Ling is returning back to the top side of the map. Things come over, feelings going down. <clears throat> Melee upgrades going to continue through into the hatchery. will get placed. Again, just seeing that light on the way up. Definitely, Jion coming out of all of this in an advantage, in a bit of a lead for the moment. And he is going to start pushing with this advantage as well. Let's see what he can do as he opens up some rocks. He has a nice quick push from his side of the map up into dark spaces. Go straight onto this set of rocks, open that up again. Combat shield is about to be done. As you'll be able to move up here with these marines. In they go. The left hand side, we're gonna be able to scan for a little bit of creep spread. Lings on the counter attack going straight through. Well, the marines get there, they're gonna be able to pick off a bunch of lings quite nicely as well. As you know, Pion Supply really is looking fantastic here. As he deals with the counter attack and he can focus up on this side of the map, I feel like he may be able to find himself a very good situation. This may be a little awkward because the Marines can't get back into the Medivacs because the Queens are nearby, but the trade is just so good. 1-1 one, one against 0-0 zero, zero, plus a choke point and the Marines are indestructible. My goodness, they will trade until the bitter end. There's going to be maybe a Ling or two left as reinforcements of Bjorn are already over here and Dark is just dead dead as Bjorn is going to take game 3. The series will not end yet. We have got it in the bottom left still on tournament point today. Our Red Zerg Dragon Kaiser Gaming's Dark. Challenging beyond our Blue Terran in the top right who turns it around a little bit. See if you can keep it up going into game four, kind of get back on track again. It still feels though little things have been a little messy from him throughout, but at this point I've uh, definitely said that a few times already, so I think we can probably just leave the point alone and get on with it and see what comes up as the barracks is on the way. And gas starts, and this overlord just continuing to make its way out across towards the far right-hand side of the map for a few moments. Overlord on a journey. Heading across in these early stages. So the rack's going down. Just gonna be seeing our wall off getting set up at the front here. Patch gas and spawning pool being brought in. A couple of drones are still producing. It's going to get a depot over to the sides there as well. As we get this uh, up and running, Dave, thank you so much for the 11 month resub, mate. Appreciate it. As our oh, Lord still just wandering towards the upper right side again, getting a little bit of a track of things. Just trying to see what's going on. Right, coming up, Reaper coming through, Queens and Lings continue to produce. Well, Lings will start to go after our Reaper. more damage being done, the Ling going down, Ling speed is still coming up for the moment. And Stimpak just getting started on that tech, we'll have a few more marines coming through, Ling speed is just about halfway done as well.
Marine still just continuing out. Stimpak coming through. Command Center is about to finish. Tech Lab's coming in. I think Speed is about to be done as well as oh, Queen. Pressing forward a little bit. A couple of Reapers still coming through. All these Marines continue to just pop on out here as Bjorn has the Reapers on the other side. Going to get caught a little bit by those Zerglins. That Reaper is going to go escape away of that right hand side. As again, lots of Marines in production. Potential for a very scary just early push from Bjorn to try and catch Dark a little unprepared. Dark has not been the most set up against a lot of these uh, attacks of Bjorn. The Hellbats a couple times now. Again, the first game he really found a way out with the counter-attack, really saved him what, what, from what I thought was going to be a whole lot more trouble. Lings getting chased away still. And Marines is going to get underneath that Overlord. Very nearly going down. The Lings are going to find a wrap around those. So the Lings are going to get on top of these Marines. Those Marines will all drop. Still going to be finishing, just going to be seeing our Hero of Lords still coming up, Engineer Bay coming in, Marines producing as we stem back a little bit. The Ling's going to get a little bit of a wrap around here. This Marine's going to be in a little bit of trouble. It's a lot of Ling's going down, as you see, you'll see. Our factory morphing in a reactor. Stop all coming up. Resources lost at the end of this. It is a lot of Marines dead. Cost some lings, but a lot, a lot of marines. Like 24 marines is obviously not a small number. And immediately, Dog goes into a roach roar. And whatever, he just feels as though there's not going to be any further marine pressure now, so he can get up to a good roach count without being attacked officially. And there's not going to be too much kind of drop play or anything either, because his opponent's now a little bit uh, committed through on other bits and pieces. That's uh, so still just. Continuing in for the moment as we continue by. Marines joined up together and still just in general again seeing a little bit of setting up these early stages. Gonna start running forward. Marines gonna stem up and just gonna back away from those lings, and that's actually gonna be a better trade there for Beyond than what he found earlier. So that unfortunately is gonna be a little bit costly from Dark. He is again gonna start making the roaches now. Carapace done, missile upgrade starting. Plus an attack upgrade coming in off the engineering bay of Beyond as well, so he needs to bring that through. And knock down a couple more of these creep tumors and just continue to have a little bit of a path into the creep spread. So that's one thing that Bjorn is going to have wonderfully done. The creep is going to be very limited from his opponent, so I've got to imagine that is something of a factor. Medivac still just coming around a little bit. Medivac is going to escape up to the top side. Yo, thank you so much, Sir Francisco. For the six month resub on the Prime. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support today. Thanks for subscribing to the channel as our Marines unload back to the upper right hand side. Game's calming down a little bit. Dog is going to take a gold though, which is obviously very fun. We to see where we go from here.
The driver just starting to get aggressive now as Rush Speed's about to kick in. There's a group of tanks on his left side that are going to be very good initially, but maybe they can get jumped on if Dark wasn't stopping to attack some depots. Now the Roaches kind of make up the distance. However, it took a little while. So those tanks got a lot of shots off, and I think that defensive tank positioning is going to work out. We're getting chased on the right side. The last couple of Ravagers here getting pushed away. It was not quite the engagement Dark was looking for. If he didn't get caught on those depots, I actually think if he moved past the depots and dove on the tanks on the left a little sooner, he would have probably had those, and then maybe this fight actually will be able to continue from that point. Could have been very different. We're going to try and utilize the weakness of this gold base, which is, of course, the fact that there's a backward location you can just sit on behind it and just just work away at some of the drones and just try and stop mine with your ranged units. Dark only on 70 workers as he's maxed out, so he's not on a big economy. He is starting the Bane Nest, the melee upgrades, the things that will take him through to the next stage of this game. These Ravagers move up, and you'll see potential, some vials on a tank. There's only a couple tanks in range, so... This isn't all too bad initially as we are going to knock one of those tanks down. The tank line is a bit deep though, so we'll see the next uh, tank start again to play. But this is a hell of a lot of roaches and Bjorn is not doing anything about those. Now we've got one tank that's not sieged up. The only tank that is a problem is that one that's really sieged up in the corner of the natural. It doesn't look as though that's going to last too long either as the roaches are in the natural now as well. And Bjorn has just melted through this push. Dark has just sliced his way deep into the army and is just going to be able to win it out from there. GG's dark. Convincing, honestly. And there's game number uh, four.